Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you've joined us here to expand beyond our recent video on the annual asthma review. Today we're going to be looking at understanding the peak flow meter and how the peak flow meter is really useful for patients to monitor their asthma at home. Now, I'm going to let you in on a small secret. Um, many years ago, um, I actually attempted to get into the RAF. Um, did quite well with officer selection and things like that. Unfortunately, um, as a little boy, I'd had asthma. And unbeknownst to me, my gran continued to get me my inhaler all the way through to my 18th birthday, even though I hadn't used it for years. The upshot of this was that asthma was on my uh, record and thus I was barred from entry at that point. Now, I raise that now because as I've gotten a little bit older, um, my asthma has somewhat resurfaced. And given what we discussed uh, last week about the annual asthma review, I thought it might be very worthwhile to dig into a little bit more about the peak expiratory flow reading, but also demonstrate with my own inhaler what the effect of effectively taking your medication will have on your peak flow and hopefully indicate that how that can improve a patient's, perhaps your quality of life. So with that in mind, let's revisit the peak flow. What actually is this gizmo and, well, why do we care? Well, the peak flow um, is literally what, uh, what it says on the tin. It's the peak expiratory flow rate over one second. So that means what is the fastest amount of air that the patient is able to push out? And we use these uh, gizmos in order to do that. And as you may have seen in the other video, and particularly a way that I will um, describe this to patients, is that short, sharp puff of air that you use to try and blow out a candle. So sometimes when we get patients to do the peak flow, they will take it and they will completely blow as if they're trying to empty their lungs. That doesn't matter in this situation because here we're not looking at the volume, the capacity of your lungs, we're looking at the speed that you can actually breathe out with. So with that in mind, in terms of doing the peak flow reading, we need to make sure we've got our cleaned um, peak flow meter and that the peak flow meter, if it's a patient's, is less than a year of age. We're going to take a new mouthpiece, which we're going to put onto the end with the filter closest to the patient. Then we're going to get the patient to take the peak flow, making sure that they're not covering the outflow with their fingers, and similarly, that they're not preventing the uh, reader from moving along with their um, finger. And we're going to place the tube within their mouth. Okay. When they do that, we're going to ask that they have a nice seal around the mouthpiece. If I've got a spare one to hand, I like to try and demonstrate this to the patient. From there, we're going to ask the patient to sit up nice and tall and take a deep breath in, and then forcefully blow out as hard as they can, crucially, as fast as they can. Go back to my previous point, like they're trying to blow out candles from a birthday cake. So let's try that now. So I've got my peak flow meter. It's a brand new one. We've zeroed the reading. We've got a new mouthpiece on, and I'm going to take a deep breath in, Okay, and that seems to be quite acceptable, 640. Does that matter? At this moment in time, we don't necessarily know. What we need to do is repeat this three times. So, re-zero. Get the patient to take a deep breath in. Okay, so I've managed to increase by 10 uh, litres per minute. I'm happy with that, but I need to do one more uh, blow to make sure that I've, we're happy uh, with that. And I want to see if I can get to that 650. So, here we go. Okay, so giving a, so excellent, I'm happy with that. Given a nice big push, I've managed to get that to 670 litres in a minute. Now, it's quite usual to get some variation when we're doing the peak flow. And as you can see, part of that will be recruiting muscles. Part of it may be just patient technique. Um, so if there's over 40 units of difference between any of 
the um, attempts, we need to repeat those two attempts as we don't know quite which is accurate. Now, let's just find out what I need here. So as with everything we do in medicine, uh, realistically, it's going to go through a phone, an app, or something when it comes to calculating. So trying to organize my uh, estimated peak flow, my age is 37 years, and I'm uh, 186 centimeters in height. I'm Caucasian, and I'm male, or I certainly was last time I checked. And we've just seen that I've managed to do uh, a peak flow of 670 mils. Now, the computer has said double check this because that's a very high reading, but we have done that. Now, the reason why it's flagged up that's a high reading is that my lower limit of normal should be 560, so I've done quite well on that uh, attempt. However, my estimated peak flow for my height and age should actually be 658. Now, I'm going to take a lap of honor with that and assume that's because I'm still relatively fit. But I know that I, my asthma has resurfaced a little bit, but in a very specific way. I know that I get a little bit of exertional asthma or exercise induced. So I'll go for a nice run, and by the end of it, I will hear, as I'm breathing, a slight expiratory wheeze. So a slight at the end of each expiration. Similarly, if I'm not working quite as hard, if I'm on the bike, perhaps, rather than running, then I'll notice I tend to cough more as I push harder. So that's why I need to use my inhaler before I do sport. So with that in mind, let's see what the effect of my inhaler is. And as we did with um, Abby in our annual asthma review of asthma, we need to make sure we're using our inhaler correctly. So in terms of my inhaler, I'm checking that it's in date. And if there's the capability on uh, the machine, I'm going to check to see how many um, doses remain. If I'm not sure about the doses remaining, then I can test it to make sure that I'm getting um, an expiration of the uh, medication. So because we're looking at an aerosol, I'm going to shake it a little bit. I'm going to take a nice deep breath in, sitting up nice and straight, breathing in, breathing out. And then on my next breath in, I'm going to press the actuator as I breathe in. And after that, I'll hold for 10 seconds. Now, that's not going to have an immediate effect on my lungs. So we need to wait 10 to 15 minutes before we recheck this peak flow reading with the inhaler on board. Because I appreciated that um, there's going to be a little bit of time between me taking the salbutamol and being uh, seeing an effect, I brought along a few other inhalers that are useful to demonstrate because they have slightly different techniques. The first one we've got is the Respimat inhaler. This tends to be seen with Spiriva, um, and this one will provide more of a mist. So if you've not used your inhaler for a week, or it's a new inhaler, you need to prime it. So to do that, we're going to twist it all the way around until it clicks. We're going to remove the cap and press the gray button, which will then provide a uh, release. We're going to reclose it. And once again, we're twisting around for it to click. Then for us to use the inhaler, we once again take the end off. And now we can see that there are two holes either side of the inhaler mouthpiece. The same as we did with the um, MDI inhaler, the salbutamol. I'm going to breathe out fully. And as I'm ready to take another breath, I'll put the inhaler in my mouth and press as I inhale. I'll also make sure that my chin is ever so slightly up and I'm sat comfortably before using the inhaler. So, deep breath in and out. So again, holding for about 10 seconds. 
times or as long as you can comfortably. However, for those of you thinking about at home what's going to happen to the salbutamol I've inhaled, don't worry, these are placebos for demonstration and for teaching patients. The next inhaler is a slightly easier one to demonstrate and test, and frankly it's a little bit more fun. So here we have the elliptor. This is a breath actuated inhaler. So what that means is there's no buttons to press or ways of priming the inhaler. We are simply going to suck and our breath will actuate the inhaler and result in the medication being dispensed. So obviously a question to that is going to be how much sucking do you do? How do you know how much breath to use? That's where, again, the demonstration inhalers come from. So once again, we're going to sit up nice and straight. We're going to do deep breath out and a deep breath in. And when we breathe in using this inhaler, the demonstration inhaler will play a note. And that note should tell us that we're breathing in at the correct, well, strength. So let's try that. In, out. So, what, what's the significance of the note? Well, depending on how um, effective your breathing technique is, you may not be able to generate a noise if you're not uh, breathing um, with enough force. Conversely, if you've got someone who's breathing too hard, then we're going to get that long, long pitch. In a situation like that, that medication is going to slam right to the back of my throat and won't be effective. So we need to train the patient to breathe with enough force just to generate the first start of that note. And again, you want to keep that note going for as long as you can. So between me faffing about behind the cameras, I think there's been about 15 minutes past since I used the salbutamol. Let's see what the outcome is. So we've got the same um, uh, peak flow meter from before, and we're going to do nice deep breath in and short and sharp blast. OK, so, so immediately on that, I've been able to blow 700 litres per minute on that, which is a nice uh, bump up from my 670. But the question is, can I get it any higher? Okay, no it appears, that's a straight 700, so maybe that's the maximum that I've got. I've got one more blow left, let's see. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it appears that 700 is my maximum. But you can see there, taking the salbutamol has a direct impact on uh, the uh, results that the patient is going to get. Now, from my perspective, it's quite important that you've seen that marked change in my peak flow reading uh, before and after the salbutamol. One of the reasons why I say that is because that variation is important in diagnosing asthma. And if we've got a patient that thinks they have asthma, one of the ways we can diagnose it is using this uh, machine. So we'll give them the peak flow meter and ask them to do three readings, as we've just done, at night before they go to bed and also in the morning when they wake up. Of those three, we're writing down only the highest readings. And what we'll do is we'll monitor them over a two-week period to see what the change between the morning and the night readings are. And if we find a 20% variation, a 20% dip between the readings every day, then that's diagnostic for asthma. In which case, we'll bring them in, we'll give them the peak flow meter, We'll ask them to use some salbutamol. We'll um, have them sit in the waiting room, and then 15 minutes later, we'll repeat the peak flow to see if, again, we can demonstrate not that there has been a decrease this time, but whether or not we've managed to show reversibility. So what we mean by reversibility is their, as their peak flow meter reading has improved significantly using the salbutamol in which case we'll diagnose that patient as asthmatic 
and depending on what features the patient has presented with, we'll ask them to start a steroid inhaler along with uh, their sal uh, a reliever, the salbutamol. The reliever uh, would be used as and when the patient needs it. So for example, in my case, prior to me going and doing a run, but the steroid, the preventer, will be used routinely every uh, morning and every night to try and prevent the patient needing to use their reliever or being affected by their asthma. Well, I hope that's been a useful overview of the inhaler techniques that we can use for different devices, but also how to use the peak flow meter. We're trying to expand on a few of these different types of videos to do with sort of patient monitoring and things that can help patients at home. If you've got um, areas that you'd like us to cover, please put it in the comments down below and we'll see if we can help. With that in mind, have a good evening and we'll see you all on the next one. Take care.